Greetings, fellow mortals. Recently, I've been thinking about change. I've looked back at my life and thought about how many things are different, from my looks to my relationships to who I even am as a person. People are never stagnant. Whether you like it or not, you will change. It's a part of life. If someone doesn't change with the times, people will take notice. In some ways, it's admirable. If someone is able to look young for an extended period of time, they're praised. If someone retains a quality that people find appealing, they're praised. But if someone remains immature, looks worse during a period of time, or loses that spark that they had earlier in their life, then they're met with scorn. This rule doesn't only apply to people, fans will hold their favorite series accountable as well. It doesn't matter which form of media that comes out, it needs to improve in order to maintain its fan base. At the same time, fans want their series to have that old spark. They want their favorite forms of entertainment to maintain their identity while they're improving. It's easy to watch as a series progresses from one release to another. This is especially true if there are regular releases from the creators. One of the more interesting aspects of living in the age of the internet is to be able to document and watch change as it occurs. It's almost too easy to document the past, the present, and the coming future. I think that it puts a lot of pressure onto artists. The internet never forgets, and will never let you forget everything that you've ever done or said. One of the more interesting cases of change comes from the Yakuza series. If you're unaware of the series, Yakuza or Ryuga Gotaku is a series of video games from Japan. Traditionally, they're beat em up style of games. Each installment of the series focuses on organized crime, government corruption, and conspiracy. While there are spin-off games and multiple player characters in different games, the series generally follows a man named Kazuma Kiryu. From the first game to the sixth main installment, the focus was on this super serious man as he faced both the deadly and goofy sides of the fictional district of Kamurocho. Except, there eventually had to come a time when Kiryu's spotlight came to an end. The creators realized that they had done all they could with the story. Everything would eventually degrade if they continued to focus on Kiryu. The story, the combat, and the creative drive that made the Yakuza series so unique. It had to change. That was why the creators, Ryuga Gotaku Studios, decided to take a risk. They had Kiryu retire. They had to adapt the mainline series. They had to completely reinvent themselves. Enter Yakuza 7, or Yakuza Like a Dragon. Side note, Like a Dragon is what Ryuga Gotaku translates to. So they combine the western and eastern titles into one for this game. Not only is this my favorite game in the series, it's one of my favorite games ever made. Instead of focusing on the stoic Kiryu, the creator centered the game around the eccentric and cheerful Ichiban. They threw the beat em up style of combat into the spin off Judgment series, and they adapted the turn based style for this new game. For the most part, they even abandoned the city of Kamurocho in order to focus on an entirely new location. It's obvious to say that fans were skeptical of this change in direction. This was especially true because the original announcement for the combat system was dropped right next to April Fool's Day. At first, people thought it was a prank. They knew that the story was going to move on from Kiryu, but they never thought that the studio would go that far. Ryuga Gotaku Studios threw away almost everything that they knew. Instead, they tried something completely different. They threw themselves out of their comfort zone. And you know what? They absolutely nailed it. If someone were to ask me where to start with the Yakuza series, I would give them two answers. If they want to go through the whole series without spoilers, then they should start with the prequel. Yakuza 0 is a game that stands next to Like a Dragon as one of the best of the entire series. They're both vastly different games about very different time periods. Both are amazing, and for me, Yakuza 7 only barely beat Zero as my favorite. That's because of how everything about Like a Dragon tells a story. Ichiban mirrors Kiryu in almost every single way. Both of them end up in jail for something that they didn't do. They went willingly in order to help their Yakuza clan. They exit the prison to find the world that they don't understand. The technology is different. The people are different. Even their clans are different. 
Both of them are forced to figure out what went wrong while they were gone and claw their way to victory. While their similarities are apparent, their differences stand out even more. While Kiryu is rigid and stoic, Ichiban is flexible and happy. They ooze two different types of charisma. Ichiban isn't afraid to say whatever is on his mind. Kiryu is far more reserved. While Kiryu embodies everything that the Yakuza strive for, Ichiban's personality makes everyone question why he would even join the Yakuza in the first place. Even their expressions are different. Kiryu seems to always have a permanent scowl spread across his face. Ichiban, on the other hand, smiles so widely in public that people can see his teeth. Their different personalities are also how the studio explains the different combat styles. The beat-em-up style of combat shows that Kiryu is a force of nature. If you master the combat, you can smack enemies around like they're rag dolls. They can barely even put up a fight. Ichiban, on the other hand, interprets fights from his favorite video game series, Dragon Quest. Yakuza 7 is turn-based because Ichiban thinks that it's fair to let someone get a hit in on him. While Kiryu fights alone most of the time, Ichiban relies on his friends to back him up in almost every combat situation. It's almost comical how Ichiban is able to convince people to work with him. Even former enemies melt before Ichiban's sincerity. By the end of the game, there's hardly a soul that hasn't been moved by Ichiban. Instead of plowing ahead on his own to destroy everyone in his path, Ichiban incorporates everyone into his plans. In a way, this makes him superior to Kiryu. Oftentimes, the Yakuza games end in a giant mess that Kiryu overlooked. By the time that Yakuza 7 comes to an end, almost everything is wrapped in a bow. While not everything happened like Ichiban would have wanted, I would argue that the seventh game has the happiest and most hopeful ending in the entire series. Ryu Ga Gotaku Studios knew what they were doing. They based Ichiban's entire journey on him clawing his way from rock bottom into something new and better. He goes from being homeless to being a multi-millionaire executive. He starts out without a friend in the world and eventually befriends an entire city's worth of people. He goes from being someone that no one respects to having some of the series' most popular characters viewing him as their equal. The game showed me that it's okay to fall. It's okay to need to reinvent yourself. You don't have to completely change who you are, but sometimes you have to make adjustments to be the best version of yourself. Keep the aspects that make you who you are and use them to become a shining light. And sometimes that involves taking a risk. The most important thing is to dedicate yourself to your decision. If you don't put in the work and don't do it with love, you won't be able to succeed like Ryuga Gotaku Studios did with Yakuza 7. At the time of Like a Dragon's release, the Yakuza series was 15 years old. In the game, Ichiban was over 40 years old. Neither the series nor the characters were new, shining things to be molded. People already had their view of what Yakuza and what Ichiban already were. It was insane to think that they could be anything different. Yet everything about the game proved the world wrong. The studio gained new respect and raised themselves to another level. Ichiban changed his entire life. It's a beautiful story that I hold dear in my heart. It's a tale where reality meets fiction. Like all great art, Yakuza Like a Dragon bleeds its story from every pore in its body. And the best part of the whole process is that the studio didn't need to change the spark. They still had a serious narrative. They still had the fun mini games. They even still had the ludicrous side stories that you can find around the city. They even got to keep working on their beat em up style of combat with their ongoing judgment series. Or kind of ongoing at least, it's still up in the air. There's some contract and publicity problems going on with Judgment's main actor. We'll see what happens with that. But we still have Yakuza 8 to look forward to at least. Or Yakuza Like a Dragon 2. Whatever they decide to call it. They haven't announced anything yet. But I for one am looking forward to see where they go with the series. How will the pandemic affect their vision of Yakuza? What will they do to improve the combat? What will be on their minds as they make the game? I can't wait to find out. 
I can only hope that they inspire me like they did with Yakuza 7. They made sure that I knew from the bottom of my heart that it is never too late to reinvent yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that these stories of people clawing their way to better lives inspire you like they did me. Remember that stories mimic real life. Improving yourself and your life isn't an impossible fantasy. And if you like my takes on storytelling, please remember that I will be self-publishing my novel Dance of Frozen Death at the beginning of 2023. I hope that you will check it out. I appreciate you. Do not despair.